Hello everybody, my name is Michael from Polygon Island and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on this cool kind of Venom-esque dark matter kind of um, thing. So, uh, before this video starts, I want to shout out who I got this idea from. Uh, it's Pink Pocket TV on YouTube. They made a uh, dark matter kind of thing. I just saw the thumbnail and decided everyone to recreate it. I didn't watch the video. I will watch the video though because I would like to give them like you time likes and stuff but anyway uh you should go watch that video too uh i haven't watched it. i don't know what he does but maybe we do the exact same thing i don't know but let's get right into it so first what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna shift a and then i'm going to add a cube um you, you should have a default cube in there already if you do delete it and then add another cube because we don't use default cubes <laughs> but anyway uh so once we have our cube what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our modifiers tab add modifier and then we're gonna add a subdivision surface and then we are going to just subdivide this uh, about five times until it becomes a sphere so we're gonna scale this up by five and what you can see is that we all have we have all quads instead of um, a sphere just being like um, let me let me give an example we had a UV sphere you can see it has poles uh, the UV sphere isn't very um, isn't very good uh, to be honest with you, it's just the topology isn't very good. So that's why we're using this. So now that we have this, what we're going to do is we are going to go uh, still on our modifiers tab, add a modifier, then add a displacement modifier. We're going to click new on this little texture right here and then click this little button uh, way off to the right. And that will take us to our display or our texture tab. What we can do is change type from image, image or movie to clouds. And so once we have this, we'll have this kind of shape. Um, so we're going to go back to our modifiers tab and change the strength to down to like maybe point, maybe point four, uh, maybe something like that. And what we can do is go back to our textures tab. Uh, you can either change it to soft or hard. I'm going to keep mine on soft. Uh, you can change whatever, uh, you can change to whatever, uh, kind of noise you want. Uh, I'm thinking that looks good. Uh, we can also change the size. This is what we're going to be using to uh, kind of animate it later. Uh, you can also change the depth and the nabla. I'm, I'm to be honest with you, I don't really know what that does. You can also change the contrast to make it more like, um, more like in, I guess. And now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to. Uh, add another modifier. We're gonna add a subdivision surface, and we're just going to make it smooth. Um, and then once we have that, we can apply the subdivision surface, and then uh, shade smooth. And so once we have it shaded smooth, what we can do is we can see that we have a lot of geometry right now. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add a where is it wireframe modifier. So we're gonna add this wireframe modifier, and you can see right now it's really weird. So we're just going to change the thickness to like 0 0.01, uh, actually maybe 0 0.005 will work. Yeah, so we have this now, um, I might even change it even lower, actually. Yeah, something like this maybe, 0 0.004. So we have something like this. Um, and now what we can do is we can basically um, shift A and I'm just going to add a UV sphere for this because we're not really like doing anything with it. Uh, and I'm just going to add a emission shader uh, by going to our materials tab, clicking add and then emission. And I'm going to change this to a like purplish blue and then change the strength up to about five. I'm also going to click our um, amalgamation here and click new and then I'm going to give this a black material uh, maybe maybe just a dark gray with a roughness of about 0.4 maybe, maybe that'll work um, I'm gonna put this light over here I'm gonna change the world to black and then I'm going to see how this looks right now so this is how it looks right now we're in EV so I'm gonna enable bloom ambient occlusion screen states reflections stuff like that uh, we can also look how it looks in cycles. Um, cycles also looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go to Eevee and I'm going to enable 
let's see if I add SSGI. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, um, if you don't know what this add-on is, I made a video on it. It'll be um, on a card, like right at the top, top right, I think. But yeah, uh, SSGI is just like screen space global illumination. Just makes EV a lot more realistic. And so now that we have that, what we can do is we can shift A and then we can add a plane. I'm going to put the plane all the way down here. Scale it up. Just scale it up really big. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift A and then add a cylinder. Bring the cylinder down. Just scale it down like this or like SZ. Scale it down to something like that. Bring it up, bring it down, put it where um, it's kind of clipping through the um, the plane. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. No, we're not going to add a subdivision. We're going to uh, shade smooth and we're going to add an edge split modifier. And then we're going to click apply. And then we're going to shift D, bring this up, or GZ. We're going to scale this like this, SZ. To where it's something like this just something like that and now once we have that we can just give these a metallic kind of um, shader and I'm gonna give it the same material I just gave that one alright then once we have that we can go into our render view and we can see how this is looking right now uh, we can also change it to cycles um, we can hide this light Eh, maybe not. Uh, I'm going to change this to a dark gray. The high roughness. Then I'm probably going to change back to Eevee. Something like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to animate this um, kind of thing right here. So how we're going to do that is we're going to click on it. And then we're going to go to our texture tab. And under size, we're going to click on it and click insert keyframe. And so once we insert keyframe, you'll see down here there's a keyframe inserted. And that basically locks the position of this. And so what we can do is we can go up to like maybe 30. Change it to like not that much. Maybe point seventy five. Then insert the keyframe. Go to frame like sixty or something. And then put it back down to like point forty five. Insert keyframe. Frame one hundred. Point eight. And just keep like changing this and then keyframing it in. And then if you want a looping animation, just make it to where um, it's on the same keyframe as this. So make sure the value of your final keyframe is the same on this. So this is 0.43, so 160. From 160, I'm going to, or actually 159. 159. I'm going to, whoop, where did I just click? I'm going to put 0.43. And then insert keyframe. So now if we look, we should be able to play back our animation. My computer is kind of struggling with it as you can see, but you can see that the animation is um, it is changing. Um, if you want it to be more intense, you could always change it to like bigger values and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go to my render tab and then file format make sure it is on ffmpeg video and encoding container mpeg4 uh, you can change all this if you want to but I'm not going to do that also what you could do is go to edit and preferences and then animation and default interpolation put it on linear instead of bezier and save preferences um, and basically what that does is at the start it'll like slow down and then it'll speed up and then toward the end it'll slow down again um, We don't really want that uh, you can change your um, 
thing to about 30 FPS and then what we can do is we can go on a rendered and we can fix some of the stuff that we need to fix so I'm going to delete these guys right here um, this light I'm going to change to maybe a blue I'm going to change that to a blue light and then I'm going to bring this over here and I'm going to change this to a orangish light so something like this and once we have this what we can do so we can go back to frame one uh, once we have that what we can do is what I would do is I would probably add some more lights just around this really uh, make this one blue so we just kinda have like rim lights and stuff um, what you can also do is you can make the sphere brighter um, you can make this maybe like 15 or something um, and then we can change the wireframe to maybe 0 0.005 and that'll kind of make it thicker. Um, I might also scale down the sphere a little bit to something like that. Um, I'm also going to change the lights to maybe 1500 instead of uh, 1000. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And what I'm also probably going to do is what I could do is just add a cube, scale it over my entire scene, go to our materials tab, click new, and under surface, click disconnect, under volume, click principled volume, uh, and then just put it as like 0 0.02 or something. Um, and then we can see what that looks like in cycles. You can see it's too intense right now. Maybe point zero zero one, something like that. And now that we have that, um, if you want to, you could render the animation cycles. Um, Honestly, I would render it in Eevee just because it's a, it's real time. It's a lot faster. But yeah, uh, that's basically all there really is. So uh, thanks guys so much for watching. Um, you can do pretty much whatever you want with this. You can set up your scene however you want. But thanks guys so much for watching. My name is Michael from Polygon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.